some news coming into our newsroom right now. The Wisconsin State Journal is reporting that the president's motorcade has stopped at La Follette High School. But let me tell you, if you're going to ride from Madison to Baraboo, you better be prepared for some hills. They were killer today. And it takes a lot of work and just a good reminder to really think twice before you yeah. call and make sure it's an emergency. The search for a man wanted in connection with an armed robbery ends with a police standoff. It was one year ago today. I reported live from here standing in front of an empty lake basin. Lake Delton had washed away. Do you wear protective gear? I'm nervous for you. <laughs> yeah, but fortunately no spandex. We want people to tune in. Oh, come on. So yeah, <laughs> well, you, gotta, you better not be bringing it. I'm not going there. Let's start with this. I saw a headline in the Washington Post today titled Obama's Rescue Mission in Madison. Is that what today is and how successful will it be? 2009 was the most deadly year in the last decade for domestic violence. Bonsoir is what I should say. That means good evening I in don't French. Know French. But yes, yes. There, there's our little lesson for the day. And now you're going to teach us. This is NBC 15 News at 6. Now at 6, tragedy in Dodge County as a young girl is killed in a violent dog attack. Good evening, I'm Lee Mills. John has the night off. A four-year-old girl is dead after she's attacked by a dog while playing in the yard this afternoon. It happened in the town of Hubbard in Dodge County. NBC 15's Chris Woodard is here with more. Ellie, this is a very difficult situation. Chris, thank you. New at 6, Watertown police are searching for a man they say is armed and dangerous. This man, 26-year-old Corey Keel of Watertown, allegedly robbed the Aurora Pharmacy on Main Street Sunday morning. He entered the store with a handgun and left with narcotics. If you have any information on his whereabouts, call the Watertown Police Department. Also new tonight, an update to a story that's taken off across the nation. We told you last night about this New Jersey family's perfectly timed picture at our state capitol. It caught a man stealing one of their bags in the background. John Myers took the picture to Capitol Police, who were able to track down and arrest Glenn Lambright and found the family's bag. Tonight, we're hearing from those officers. I recognize I called him right over to me. Pretty amazing there. The Myers family did put their story up on the web blog Gizmodo. Maybe you saw it there. Well, since then, it has exploded nationwide. Tomorrow morning, the Today Show will air a story on the Capitol Police officers and the Myers family. You can catch that story right here on NBC 15 at 730 tomorrow morning. Well, the state could spend around $100,000 in the next year to provide state IDs to newly released inmates. And as NBC 15, Zach Schultz tells us, this has one local politician very upset. The program will run through the end of next June. The Department of Corrections hopes it will be extended in the next budget. Well, let's take a look now at what's making news county by county. We start in Columbia County, where boats are still patrolling the Wisconsin River for a man who jumped off of a bridge. Authorities are searching for Bob Kleist of Prairie du Sac. He jumped off the Highway 60 bridge with two others Monday night. Witnesses say Kleist landed awkwardly and didn't come back up. The jump was from 60 feet up into only one, 10 feet of water. Alcohol is believed to be a factor. The Columbia County Sheriff says boats will be out searching from 7 in the morning until dusk, from now until at least Friday. In Sauk County, candidates for sheriff meet tonight for a debate. All three candidates will be at the Rock Springs Community Center for the 7 p.m. debate. Sauk County Chief Deputy Richard Chip Meister and Court Security Lieutenant William Bill Steinhort face off in this September's Republican primary. The winner will challenge Democrat and retired detective Paul Hefty in the election. We do have a crew up in Rock Springs tonight and we'll hear from the candidates tonight on NBC 15 News at 10. Also tonight in your decision 2010 news, Republican candidates for Governor Scott Walker and Mark Newman will square off tonight in their final debate before the September 14th primary. The two candidates will field questions from both the moderator and those viewing the debate at various locations across the state. Meanwhile, Democratic candidate Tom Barrett reinforced his support of stem cell research today. Barrett spoke today at the Biotechnology Vision Summit. He talked about the injunction issued earlier this week stopping federal funding of human embryonic stem cell research. Barrett says he will do everything on a state and federal level to make sure that funding continues. 
Both Republicans oppose embryonic stem cell research. They argue that research can be done in the area without destroying embryos. Now that temporary block on funding has stem cell researchers here in Madison facing an uncertain future. A UW Madison researcher pioneered stem cell research back in 1998. The director of the university stem cell research center says workers are quote befuddled about how to continue their work. It's been almost five years since Hurricane Katrina made landfall on the coast of southeast Louisiana. This Sunday marks the storm's fifth anniversary. Katrina formed in the Atlantic on August 23rd, crossing southern Florida as a Category 1 hurricane. It weakened before making landfall as a Category 3 storm in southeast Louisiana. That was on the morning of August 29th, 2005. Katrina is on record as the costliest and one of the five deadliest hurricanes in U.S. history. Tonight, we catch up with a couple who fled the storm never to return permanently. NBC 15's Dana Bruick has an update. The Berrymen say they recognize rebuilding the city is a staggering task, but they remain hopeful about its future. Starting tomorrow, NBC News will return to the Gulf region and report on life after the storm. Ryan Williams will lead this coverage of the Hurricane Katrina anniversary from New Orleans. Well, they are one of the area's most dominant teams, and they plan to keep things rolling this season. Tonight, how these athletes plan to stay at the top of their game ahead of this year's prep football kickoff.